In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these wonderful custom frisbees out of fiberglass. And you can put whatever you want in the middle for decoration. And they fly good too. When doing composites, uh, there's a lot of uh, materials that you have to use to get it ready. Uh, this is an example of a, uh, a board getting laid up right here. And um, you have this bag here, you have the tape here, you have a, um, a layer of um, a breather layer, and you have this mesh that makes it so the resin can go through there. And what happens is you have the a hose right here and that hose would be inside some resin and then you have another hose coming out this side which goes to a vacuum and what happens is you uh, you suck the resin through the entire bag and as soon as it gets to the other side that's when you you clamp everything off so here's a clamp here here's a clamp here and then you wait for the resin to solidify. After you're done with that, then you have to rip off all this stuff and this all goes in the garbage. This layer, all this tape, all this layer, this layer. And it's, it's a lot of work, a lot of mess. And we're trying to find a way to make it so that students of, of a younger age can do something similar to this and uh, have it all work out. And that's what we're gonna show you today. So the goal is to find a cheap, easy way to make a Frisbee out of fiberglass. You could do carbon fiber or aramid or any other you know, composite material, but the whole purpose is to show kids a simple way to make composites and how to make them form to a mold. Okay, so for the design, I just bought fabric and then I laser cut the fabric into circles. So I have all these different images that I found at Walmart. I'll probably find some more at other stores. And I, I have all these decorations that we have. You could also uh, use veneer and and do a uh, you know, little wood core as well. So I'm gonna use the fiberglass. I have two pieces already cut right here, ready to go. Um, almost, I think about nine, nine and a half inches in diameter is all you need. So it doesn't take a whole lot of fiberglass. We'll just do two layers, a layer of this design and do another layer of this so that this is sandwiched in between the two layers. Okay, this is the resin that we're gonna be using. It's epoxy based. It doesn't smell as bad as the other kind does. So I would recommend if you're gonna do this, get a epoxy brand. You don't have to get this brand, but this is what we're using just so you can see what we're using. Um, it has a 100 to 29 by weight ratio. So for right here, mixing it up. Okay, they, they do make, um, so, some people make resins where there's a, a pump. You just pump one pump here, one pump there, and it'll mix it uh, perfectly. Uh, Total Boat is one. I'll put some links in the, in the description. Okay, so we're measuring it out by weight, doing 30 grams of A and 9 grams of B. It's important to mix really well. You want to mix for a good minute and really work good at scraping the sides, going back and forth on the bottom, doing all sorts of motions so that you can make sure that they're properly mixed. Number one reason for this not working is not getting, getting the ratio right and not mixing it correctly. All right. So the, the mold that we're using is an IKEA plate. You can get these, you know, six of them for two dollars. I found them on sale, six for a buck because they're changing their colors right now. So I bought 80 packs. Um, this is Meguiar's Mirror Glaze Mold Release Wax. All you have to do is just rub it on there with a cloth. It's 
that easy. After it dries, the next step would be to brush on some of the resin that we mixed up earlier. This resin has about 20 to 30 minute pot life. You want a resin that cures slowly, so you have plenty of time to do each layer. The key is just to get the whole thing wet. Okay, making it wet makes it so that the fiberglass will stick easier. So we'll bring in the first layer of fiberglass. Now this fiberglass has a, a twill weave, so if you stretch it, it'll get oval shaped. So you gotta be careful to not have it get like an oval. <laughs> make sure it'll fit in there. So just tap it in, make sure it goes down into all the crevices. And then after we do that, we'll take the brush and brush in more resin until the whole thing gets uh, crystal clear. So you can see through it. You don't want any of that white. It helps to you know, dab the brush up and down. Just force, force the resin into those threads. It should go all the way up the edges too. Next step would be to add a design. Did Spider-Man last time, now we're gonna do Batman. Put the image face down. You could also print on paper um, or, or wood. There's all sorts of things that you can put as the, the core material. So once you place it, you know, tap it down and then get the brush and brush on more until it becomes, uh, you know, wet. You'll definitely see a change in the uh, image so you can see it better. After that's done, you'll put on your second piece of fiberglass. So what we're doing different than the typical way is that we're putting the resin in now, we're not using a infusion method where they suck the resin in through a tube and then out the other side. This is what we would call a wet layup. Um, and sometimes they'll just brush on to a mold and just leave it like this and let it cure in the air. But putting it into a bag and sucking it down is what we're going to do. We'll make the layers uh, consolidate way better and uh, it just it just makes the uh, the whole product perfect. Uh, it forms to the mold way better than just doing it like this and just leaving it outside to to dry. Next is to get a bag. We have these Ziploc bags. You can buy cheaper ones. This one we figured out was about sixty six cents per bag. One thing that I found that helps is to take another plate and put it down on top of this one so you can help get the bag to already kind of form to it. Now here's the, uh, the food saver that we got. We got this for about $80 at Walmart. Um, I like it because it has this um, locking mechanism here. So we put it open, we lift it up, it has this trough in here. You want to put the bag so it's kind of going into the trough a little bit. Right inside the... There we go. Then we're going to bring it down. We're going to lock it. And then all you have to do is hit the uh, start button. back seal button <laughs> and it's 
gonna suck it down in there. probably see little tiny air bubbles and what you want to do is you want to force those air bubbles to the side and if you get those air bubbles close to one of these creases they'll they'll suck right up out and into the bag itself okay so after it finishes sealing we can actually take it out and now you can you can play with it some more just kind of massage those bubbles towards the outside and then they'll work their way out into the bag on the outside diameter here. And as you do that, you'll get a much better finish. So there's a bubble right there. Force it up in there and it goes up and out. Okay, so if you work from the middle and work your way out, you can get rid of all those little air bubbles and it'll look really nice when we're done. So after this point, uh, you just wait till the next day and then we'll tear it apart. Right, we have enough resin so that we can make another Frisbee. So we, we're using this time instead of fabric, a piece of veneer wood. This is cherry wood, just really thinly cut. And then we cut it in the circle on the laser cutter. So we're gonna put that one in this one, just so you can see the difference. Same technique. Just basically brush a bunch of resin on top of it so that it gets encapsulated by resin. And we'll show both of them tomorrow. It's the next day and uh, here they are. It's a lot more rigid. The uh, resin inside the bag has solidified. So all the excess resin I was able to push up and out and it went into the bag. So going through a, uh, a vacuum bag process makes it so that you consolidate everything and you get rid of unnecessary resin. So went to Harbor Freight, I bought a left hand cutting aviation snips. Left hand means that it cuts to the left, okay? And not that you use your left hand. So um, I'm gonna use this to try and cut it off. I think it's gonna work best upside down, so I'm gonna try that. So now I'm going to peel off the bag. Comes off fairly well. There are places with, where the creases are that it's harder to get off, but it shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to bend the plate and it should demold fairly easily. Voila. Here we go. You can kind of see the, uh, the pattern that the plate has in the bottom of the plate. That transfers to your to your coat there. Um, you can't really avoid that, but yeah, it gives it kind of a cool pattern. Uh, there's still some more I need to trim. Um, I'd rather you not trim off too much. So um, trim it as close as you can without doing too much, and then the rest of it I would say to wet sand uh, under under water. You don't want to get a bunch, you don't want to take this to a belt sander and have um, fiberglass dust all over the place. It's not good to breathe. So you want to do, use wet sanding 
to finish the edges. But I'm going to trim it some more. Here's the Batman one. Now, compared to traditional methods of doing uh, composites, this is a lot less uh, scrap and waste. So it may look like a lot, but this is nothing compared to having all those other layers and bagging tape and hoses and stuff that were in the other method I showed you. After wet sanding, you want to put something on the, on the lip to make it so that it's not so sharp. Just uh, some cheap electrical tape will work. Uh, I found that there's some other things out there. Anything that is stretchy uh, will work. So this is a uh, like kinesio tape, it's an athletic tape. So it's more, this one is more of a fabric uh, like tape on this one. So find, find something that's really sticky and has a little bit of stretch to it and it'll work really well to uh, make that rim so it's not it doesn't have a, a sharp edge on it uh, another thing that i did to this one is i bought some uh, rubberized spray some plasti dip spray and sprayed it on here it makes it more rubbery but eventually you know it can flake off but um, that's because i was just testing endurance you know how, how long it would last uh, i hope you enjoyed this project and uh, it's going to be a really cool thing to do with young kids. I did it with some scouts not too long ago. One of the things that I want you to think about is what else can we make in this bag system? We could make. We, I'm, we were thinking of little little boats, little cars. You know, car bodies for uh, RC cars or RC boats. Uh, little you know, plane um, bodies and wings and stuff. If you were to get the roll. Of this stuff, we, maybe we could even make some skateboards. Um, the, the only issue is we've got to make the molds. The, the reason we use the IKEA plate is because it's basically a mold already made for us. So I'm probably going to do some more videos using different molds, different things. But this is just the beginning, and I hope you all enjoyed it.